Welcome to segment two on the uh, Horizon 2 TEO video tutorial series on configuration. Um, we will pick up here with going back to the Horizon server. And we'll go look at uh, our parameter section. Now, the parameter section is something you probably have configured um, to look at a lot of thresholds, maybe file, system to, file systems to ignore, uh, your background uh, list of aborted jobs, etc. All of these are still uh, in uh, TEO as part of the SAP Incident Analysis Pack, Automation Pack. Um, the packs that you get with the migration, you will get all of these variables will still be um, located in. Uh, a TEO, but you also have the ability to create more uh, in the, into helping you creating your custom processes. Um, here in the parameters, you would, you know, you could create them or you could open them. And configuration here's a, a you know, a data table. You had data table, encrypted string, decimal integer, uh, and string value types. So you had this ability in in Horizon. Well, you haven't lost that ability in TEO. In TEO, uh, we call them global variables, and we have uh, find those under the definition tab, and then global variables. So as you can see here, again, we've still got like, background jobs, a list of aborted. It's a, here's a table, just as it was before. Um, buffer swap threshold. You know, the, not, these are different thresholds, different numbers. Um, you can, cr uh, uh, you know, you can edit these ones just like you could before. Um, by double clicking on them and then going into the values and then changing the values as you see fit or adding a value. Um, in this you can create, uh, these are the overrides as they were in uh, Horizon, so you can override a particular system and give it a different value. Uh, this would be like your default value and you could you know, make some additional override values. Uh, we also give you the ability to create your own. So if you right-click on global variable or you know, click on the white space and you say to go new, and then these are the variable types that you have access to. There's Boolean, encrypted string, uh, numeric string, and table, which were all there before. The new one you get is identity variable, uh, which is uh, basically you know, your, your Active Directory um, type IDs, you know, Microsoft.com slash Bob. Or, or, or whatever you know you have as your um, your domain username. Um, these give you the ability to configure uh, anything uh, globally. Uh, these are good for thresholds. These are good to pass you know uh, values from different process, different process. Anything used inside of a process would typically recommend to use a local variable as that's what they're put there for. Um, but if you need something uh, on a passing level, then, then a global would be a good idea. So those are included in all of the, these are included in all of the uh, included automation packs that we give you, but also give you the ability to create your own and also uh, filter and sort by name, description, or automation pack, which is a, which is a nice feature. So that is uh, parameters to global variables. Going back to Horizon, The next part to look at is notifications. This is, you know, a lot of you use this uh, to receive emails via the SMTP publisher. Uh, some use SMP publisher. Uh, we do do the uh, email publisher, and then the, we do do traps as well. In, in in TEO, you can send traps, publish traps, um, and then if you use MOM or or SCOM as the integration point with Horizon, we also uh, have those packs. We have the SCOM pack, SCOM 2007 pack, I'm sorry, we don't have a MOM pack uh, as of yet for TEO, uh, but we do have a SCOM 2007 pack which is being used in production by customers right now. So the configuration of the, configuration of the notifications, we can go over to uh, back to TEO. And there are a couple components to this now. There is an email adapter which you will find here. And in the email adapter, if you right click and click properties, uh, you can go to the mail tab and you can set up your SMTP server, your port, and your default sender. Of course, these um, were also set up in your initial install, but if you bypass it for a reason or they change, you can come back here and you can set them up here. 
And then back under, if we go and look at the processes, and we, this, in this case, we want to filter these by automation pack, and you want to look at the core automation pack. And what you will see is you'll see a lot of these default and then something notifications. And these are basically uh, processes that we include, and by default, most of them are, are disabled. So I had to come in and for approval notification, alert notification, incident notification. I had to enable them myself, uh, right click and then enable. Um, however, uh, this basically gives you allow the uh, ability to email. So when we do uh, an alert in a, in a process or an incident, and we assign that to someone in your active directory, in your AD, um, this process will then run and we'll be able to send emails out to the people in uh, that AD. Um, for further, you know, if you have issues, configuration, problems with this or can I get this to work you can contact support uh, or professional services um, and for, but just as an FYI um, I would suggest to enable incidents and uh, approvals of course uh, alerts maybe not as much because you may not want to get an email for every alert um, but you definitely want to get emails on your incidents um, and then here is your uh, trap notification if you do want to do it via as an MP versus uh, email we currently uh, have additional settings in global variables. If you go into global variables and we go look, and this is for SAP of course only, but we go look at uh, the uh, incident assignment, we can do it by category or specific criteria. So if we go look at specific criteria, we have and, and edit here. We have a very uh, a descriptive table where we can look and, and do things based on uh, incident ID. Uh, SAP system, description, and then who you assign it to. And so basically you can come through and you can configure these and it would be, you know, if you had incident ID 1000 for all your SAP systems and then you wanted to look for a certain, you know, you want to take a certain job that was aborted and send that to a certain group or, 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 or uh, you know, so you had, say, you had SD jobs, MM jobs running, but you wanted the SD jobs to go to that uh, SD group, so you, or that SD person, so you can assign those uh, per per person or per uh, per, AD, per AD uh activity basically. Uh, we also have security overrides, <clears throat> excuse me, and we also have assignment. You know, just a lighter assignment, which is based just on category itself and is not based in as heavy a detail as the uh, specific criteria. And then here we have uh, default assignments. Uh, these would be the person that would get you know the messages by default if you want to have a default person uh, and then uh, so basically you have to configure these global variables and these tables to uh, match your criteria in, in the email alerts <clears throat> in 2.2 uh, we will be basically re-implementing um, the notification assignment kind of email setup uh, in into TEO it's not something that hasn't really been ported yet uh, this is kind of a, a go-between for right now uh, but works uh, all the same. So you get in your emails, uh, you set up your systems, you set up your, your global variables. Um, the last part uh, of this configuration uh, will be the um, will be the databases, and we'll also go a little bit into the CLI. I will do that in segment three.